Well, hello, everyone. Uh, everyone here and everyone at home, welcome uh, to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. This is our house. This is our house where our legends live. And Michael Stefanik, certainly one of those legends. I was incredibly honored when his wife, Julie, asked me as a former modified racer to help them on their special night. So, Julie, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Please join me on stage. It is now my honor on this 21st day of January to present Mike's wife, Julie Stefanik, the NASCAR Hall of Fame inductee ring and induct Michael Stefanik into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Good evening. Wow, what an awesome tribute. Thank you, Ray. This is a huge honor, and I know Michael would have been very humbled. First, I would like to thank NASCAR and those in the NASCAR Hall of Fame for this honor. Michael would have been very proud to be voted in alongside Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Red Farmer. I also want to congratulate you, Dale and Red, along with your families on this wonderful achievement. Michael raced for 38 years and was surrounded by many great people throughout his years in the sport. I can't even begin to name names and won't even try in fear of leaving anyone out. Many of you in this room tonight had a significant impact on Michael's career, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your investment in him. I would, re would, re excuse me. I would be remiss if I didn't mention some of Michael's heroes, those who inspired him to become the man, the racer he was. The first would be his brother, Bobby Stefanik. Michael was 15 years younger than Bobby and would go to Riverside Park in Agawa, Massachusetts with their dad, who was an usher, and watch Bobby race. Michael thought the world of his big brother, Bobby. Michael said after watching Bobby, he knew he would race and follow in his brother's footsteps. Bobby taught him many things, but one was to never overcommit. If you came up on two cars, stay in the middle, you will be given time to pick the right lane. Then there was Billy Greco. He was a childhood hero of Michael's. He was bigger than life, as was three-time NASCAR modified champion Bugsy Stevens. Michael was in Bugsy's fan club when he was nine or 10. They raced together and became good friends. Michael even went to Massachusetts a few years ago and picked Bugsy up to take him flying in his ultralight. It was a great memory for both, and I still stay in touch with Bugsy today. And NASCAR's Hall of Famer, Richie Evans, was Michael's mentor. He took him under his wings and had faith in him. I remember Michael telling a story about being at Riverside Park and seeing Richie watching the guys at the tire truck. Michael asked him what he was doing. Richie told him he was seeing who was buying tires so he would know how to race them in the heat race. They became good friends, not just at the track, and they shared a lot of laughs. Michael learned a lot from these guys about life, people, and racing. Michael was not only an amazing race car driver, but an awesome fabricator. He was meticulous about everything he did. He even obsessed about his lawn. It was so gorgeous, so perfect, that when my nieces came to visit, they asked their dad if they needed to remove their shoes to walk on it. <laughs> In the winter months, he would spend three plus hours snow blowing our 900 foot driveway so it looked perfect. Again, he cared about details and everything being perfect. Michael was also obsessed with the weather always wanted to be prepared for whatever was coming. I used to tell him, don't worry, there's nothing you can do about it. His obsession was the same for racing, always prepared. Our friend John Skip Wilcox, who is with us tonight and played a huge role in get his, getting Michael's modified here in the hall, remembers riding in the dually with Michael to Thompson for the final race of 1989 with a one-point lead over Reggie Ruggiero. Having lost 10 pounds during the week worrying about Reggie, then said, it could be worse. Can you imagine if we had to beat Richie? He ended up finishing fourth, Reggie fifth, and he won his first modified championship by six points. Winning both the modified and Bush North championships in 1997 and again in 1998 was incredible. I remember going to lunch the following Monday at Chili's, and we both cried about it. 
They were happy tears. I think it was just a release from all the pressure we went through to accomplish something I believe was remarkable. Imagine the tears now with this honor. As a driver, he was very methodical about his approach to a race. He was a clean and fair racer. He was clearly old school about racing hard, but always with the utmost respect and enjoyed the competition of a hard fought race. I can recall many races at Riverside Park where he and Reggie Ruggiero would have some torrid battles, each leaning on each other and maybe a little more, but each would only shell out what the other could take. That was what Michael loved, racing hard, battling to the limits, but respecting his competitors and in turn getting the mutual respect. Michael loved a tough race, but more importantly, finishing the night with a laugh and a handshake. Michael loved to laugh, but also carried a dry, witty sense of humor. One night, modified legend Ted Christopher came over after the race at Thompson Speedway and said, Steffi, you only gave me an inch. And Michael said, why, did you need more than that? Michael was more than a racer. He was my amazing husband for almost 35 years. He was a wonderful father to our two beautiful daughters, Nicole and Christine, and he has a grandson, Gabriel, who I know he would have loved more than anything in the world. Together with my daughters, we have formed the Michael P. Stefanik Charitable Foundation. The goal of the foundation is to honor his memory through educational opportunities for young men and women who exemplify his unwavering character and relentless passion in the automotive and aviation fields. Thank you for allowing me to share a little about Michael. He was more than just a racer to us. He was a beloved husband, father, son, brother, and friend, and will be missed forever. I just wasn't Michael's wife. We were a team. I spotted for him for many years. And to quote a friend, Michael was an ordinary guy doing something extraordinary. And with that, in his honor, we have a Jack and Diet. Thank, thank, thank you. <laughs>